I really hope so, as soon. Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Okami HD Episode 29. I'm your host, Ultra Director Jester. Right off the bat, we have a lot of chests to open up. And we get an Infinity Stone right off the bat. There are tons of clams in here that hold a bunch of treasures, and this is the best opportunity for you to get them. Once you're making your way down this dungeon. There's nothing really that's crucial that you that you miss, they're just common treasures and items, really. But, uh... They can get you a lot of money at the merchants, and it's always good to get as much treasure as possible. Am I right? This dungeon, however, is pretty straightforward for the most part. Whenever you see a clam, just uh, dig it up or take it out. Whatever you gotta do. Got a hard time opening them today. The next one's up here. There's like tons of treasures in here. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to get them all. But uh, there's no stray beads, there's no traveler's guides, there's no clovers or anything. Nothing really crucial that you can't go without. Demon scroll up here, we'll ignore him. Now we're into the, uh, I guess you could say, challenge part of the dungeon. It's very, very uh, high partitions here. Double jumps and a couple of well-placed uh, dashes should do fine. If you want to open up these clams, though, make sure you do it from the front. Because you'll fling yourself off any other way. Make sure you attack it directly from the front. Couple of bottles of sake. Not really much to say here. The crucial part in this room is over in this part, because you have a key to get. Luckily, you can swim with it, so it's all good there. You could make your way all the way over there, but luckily there's a place you can just get right back up right here, using water spots. If I can manage to get up there. There we go. Alright. This jump may be a little bit tricky, but with a well-timed double jump and a dash, you should make it just fine. Still a few more treasure chests, or treasure clams, whatever you want to feel like calling them, in here. Now, with the ones buried underground, as long as you have the key, keep in mind, whenever you dig, you drop it. So hurry and dig it up, grab the key again, and then open the clam. Otherwise, you're gonna drop the key, and it doesn't take very long for it to go to start to go back to its spawn point. See, it's already starting to shake, so you can't let that happen. Haha. There's one more down there, I think. There's an extra scissor slip, but I believe that there's one more clam hidden over there. Yeah, there it is. Use water spout, or you can just use a double jump. Either way is fine. And that gets us a vengeance slip, and that's all we need. Give it a good double jump. Oh! Just short. Just short. But again, luckily, if you fall down here, uh, you can just use Water Spout over here to get back up, no problem. Just like that. And there you go. Camera likes to be a little tricky in this uh, particular dungeon. I don't know if it's because of the corridors or the strange orientation that they have, but just sometimes it's weird. Another hidden one here that I actually didn't see until when I was uh, doing practice for this uh, for this part. Water spout up here takes you to a strange grave where uh, I'm sure uh, travel on a rowboat got eaten by the water dragon and you get a crystal. It's a little a little dreary. I wonder how long he was up there? Hmm. Don't think there's really anything else here. No. Oh. I guess that heals your uh, ink and your health if you needed to. Another chest over here. Yeah, gotta get the key. Ooh, got it. That one is ooh, an incense burner. That's a good. One. Storage of mirror if you want to save, but we don't need to right now. We're just gonna keep moving forward. Double jump up here, and right in the lockjaw. Ooh. Every time.
Hmm. This must be the dragon orb that we're trying to get. There's no way to get it out right now, no matter what you do. So we might as well leave it alone for now. Head down this corner. And... Oh! Camera... Ugh. Camera just snapped on you and already it's acting weak. Ugh. Just kind of weird controlling with the camera in this dungeon. It's, it's, it's really weird. Digest this in a second, huh? Well, let's find out. Okay, it doesn't really digest us, it just really, really hurts. But, it still works like regular water. You can still do Lily Patch, you can still do Water Spout, and all that. Fountains and all that. The idea here is we need to take this red liquid and move it to this thing right there. I'm sure this is doing irreversible damage to the Water Dragon's stomach intestine and all of his lining. We are pretty much dissolving his his stomach. We are dissolving his diaphragm with his own stomach acid. That is... that is sick, man. Having fun doing it, though. That can't be good. That, that just can't be a good thing. Well, it may seem like you're trapped, but like I, like I showed you earlier, you can do it lily pad. Ah! Right, you can land on it correctly. Now, you could jump from lily pad to lily pad, but that'd take way too much time. Instead, we're just gonna do Gale Storm. Blow us. From where we need to go to. Oh, come on, get on the, get on the damn pad, Amy. It's always specifically designed for you to do just that. We need to do this for a stray bead later on this season. I would not recommend using an Infinity Stone at this point. Because it would just be a waste. Shit. I guess I can't blow up. Ah, whatever. I can just go from here. It just hurts like hell, though. Whatever, though. Now that we have this uh, red acid, this uh, stomach acid, we can go and get that dragon orb out. Can we get it out now. Nope. You gotta think there's a safer way to do this. I mean, I really don't want to hurt the guy. No, I, I know I uh, destroyed his stomach lining, but I don't want to like kill him. But this doesn't do anything bad. Oh well. Leap before you think. Oh, I get it. That was his antacid. Oh, okay. I guess the dragon orb is also a Pepto Bismol pill. Maybe an Alka Seltzer. I don't know. Either way, we got the dragon orb now. Hooray! Now we can make our way to Oni Island somehow. I don't think so as soon. I really don't think so. Not oh, great.
Awesome! Great. Foxfire. This equals tube foxes. Because everything just couldn't be easier, could they? There are three, I guess, stages to this little mini fight. I would recommend using an infinity stone right about here. Because they will drain your ink and they will have you at a severe disadvantage. The idea here is to, I recommend using the Rosary Glaive combo. That'll get you across the field very quickly and then also uh, kind of keep them at bay because the Glaive actually stuns them pretty good. But if you just keep, uh, you know, using your attacks, you know, these guys really aren't hard. If you haven't figured out the combat by now, then uh, you might have a little problem with it. It's just pretty much the same mass square and hit triangle if you're bored. Maybe use a brush technique if they're not blocking it. But that guy isn't. There we go. Okay, I'm almost gone. These guys don't have any floor finishers because they're a mini-boss and they don't appear at any other time in the game. Except for here. At least not one of I'm gonna call that the melee class because next up here is what I call the magic class because they're the ones that like to shoot ink bullets at you. Sometimes they drain your ink. These guys are kind of the same kind of ordeal. Hit for a bit, glaive for a bit, slash when they're stunned. And then they go down without too much of a fight. I also kind of like the, uh, oh, shit. oh they took I like the charge up method for the glaive so you can strike whenever you want to. You know, kind of like, uh, charge up and... There you go. He's got a poke him and it works. Really like the glaive. Really like the weapon. Alright, these guys are the ones that'll definitely drain your ink as seen now. He's gonna make you lose all that, but hey, luckily you can use another infinity stone. And you're back to full strength. They can take as much ink as they want, it doesn't matter, it doesn't make them stronger, all it does is just make them opening, make them open for a devastating Rosary Glaive attack. You know, it's the crap you've been doing all, all along. They don't seem to know when the tactic doesn't really work, though. If you only have one uh, Infinity Stone, I would recommend using it during this third phase because that's when they're going to be draining your ink the most. You should be fine with uh, the other two fights because, as I showed, they don't really drain your health that much. Probably could use Veil of Mist for most of that too. Would have made the fight go much faster. I would have a better time score. Shit. Oh well. All right, it's a pan flute. Oh, I guess I knew that. Never mind. I tried. Time bomb set, escape immediately. You have three minutes to get out of the dungeon and get any chests that you may have missed. But luckily, I think we've grabbed as many as we can get. I don't know if there's any more that I missed, if so, no big deal. But three minutes, you'll find, is incredibly generous. As long as you keep moving forward and keep following that arrow, you should have no problems whatsoever. You should get out there with plenty of time. The red drops don't really hurt you, they just slow you down. And sometimes they'll barrage on you so you get stun locked into falling down that pit, but I didn't have any that time, but just keep moving forward and you really should have no problems. I mean, if you die here, then there's probably... Oh, shit. Ah, like that. Remember, uh, 
time doesn't stop when you're in the brush mode, so just keep moving and you're fine. And with two minutes to spare, we are free. I told you dissolving his stomach would kill him. And that wouldn't be a good thing. Oh, great. I thought you couldn't swim, Amy. Are we getting a new brush technique? King Wada is based on Watatsumi, the mythological deity of the seas. His name literally means Great Water God. He is relatively unchanged from his mythological counterpart, The one major change lies in Otohime, who is supposed to be his daughter. Well, no one will look in the water dragon. Except, well, me, I guess. Well, no longer under the influence of the Dark Lord, at least he can die with some dignity now. Sorry for dissolving your stomach. Really didn't mean to, bro, but it was kind of a necessity. I kind of had to, you know. D don't be mad at me, okay? I'm sorry, okay? Well, he's dead now, so the only thing we can do is- HOLY FUCK! What are you doing here? Uh -huh. 
thrashing about on the shore. And he's probably writhing in pain from the, you know, dissolving his stomach thing. I guess that whole dungeon was completely pointless, wasn't it? Oh well. Yep. Bullseye lies with you! Good luck! Does she even really have any holy power? Because I'm thinking back to that useless sunk, uh, sunken ship dungeon. When she brought her prayer slips with her, I was the one who used their powers. She just held on to them while I guided them, so... Does she not... You know, what? whatever. I'm not gonna worry about it. We need to get this dragon over to Otohime. That's, like, number one priority. That's right. I'm sure Otohime can figure something out. She's a good leader, but uh, for now, we'll just uh, we'll just uh, get this dragon orb to Otohime, and uh, we'll just see you next time on Let's Play Okami HD. Don't forget, there's a platinum check-in after the episode, so we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, welcome to the, what is this, 5th or 6th Platinum Check-In, where we check and see how we're doing to get the Platinum Trophy for this game. Well, uh, not much to really say right now, we're doing pretty good on our, on our praise here. Once we get these all maxed out, we'll be fine, but we don't need to worry about those right now. We'll get more praise later on, as we do more side quests. We got two more brush techniques to get, but several, uh, upgrades to get, so to speak. Like how we just got the, uh, sort of, whirlpool that negated all those mermaid coins, for, uh, last episode. Uh, log books, not those, uh, travel guys is what I'm talking about. Doing pretty good on those, there's a couple that we're missing, but we'll get those eventually. That's how we get new tech, most of these are just uh, new techs for the brush upgrades that we'll get. We can worry about that, or worry about all that later. Uh, bestiary, uh, things are pretty good right now. We got the Thunder Ear, we got, uh, the Earth Nose, we got the Poltergeist, we got the blue cyclops, and these should be the two foxes. Yeah. Remember, as long as you have the fire and ice doom mirrors here, your beastie area will be just fine. If you got these guys earlier from the from the emperor's uh, the emperor's net, then you're all caught up there. 
Uh, move list, we haven't really done much there because we haven't been to the dojo. We'll get to that eventually. Don't think there's anything new in terms of animals. We've got quite a few here already. There's only three left, and I believe they're in the second, uh, the next part of the game. We'll see this in th season three, I'm sure. Fish Tome, haven't done any fishing lately. Still. We'll get to that later. We got a few new treasures. You got the dog statue, the boar statue, and the cat statue. Or, uh, Zodiac statues for, for later. That's all we got there. It's new. Yep. And, uh, last but not least, Stray Beads. We got a whole line right there from 47 through 53. Those are all Seon City. And a few of those parts we can't get until way later, but we're looking pretty good so far. Thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you next time on Let's Play Okami HD.